What's up, Welter family? Herman Perez here, bringing you another video. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to be doing uh, how to do a hot pass plate or pipe. But today, I'm actually going to be doing it on a half inch plate. Uh, many of the students that I teach every day, they struggle sometimes with how to do a hot pass on plate or pipe. So to make it easier on some of them as well, I'm going to make a video uh, going to detail about it, uh, how to carry the right speed, uh, your angle as well, because it, it does have an effect on it how far up you should go or how far away from the plate you should go when you got to let it cool down. Uh, every detail to it, I will explain in the video. Alright guys, so I already got my half inch plate tacked up uh, in the 3G position. This is, uh, I'm going to be doing it in 3G position, but the way I do everything right here, it does apply to also 2G or on um, pipe when you go all the way around. The only thing is, it's just it's just the way you run it. Uh, 2G, it is kind of different. So, my, my techniques, usually for, for a hot pass uh, with 60-10, 1 8th, uh, I do circles. I, I do kind of like a, like a T, uh, backwards T, whether it's on a pipe or plate, or I do a J. Now, the only time I don't use that J is on uh, 2G. Uh, I, I feel like it doesn't work for me a lot on 2G. I feel like it works a lot more on uh, like vertical or maybe on 6G uh, pipe. But most of the time, I, w I do use these methods. Uh, now you can do circles on 2G. You can do a, a T on, uh, on 2G, but the T is sideways, okay? Not, not like your regular backwards T where it would be up, down, you know, side to side. So right now uh, I have my machine set up at 85 amps for 610 and that's usually the amps that I run it at for a hot pass. But right now I'm gonna start off with doing circles. Now, you, whenever you go up, you have to go away from the puddle. That's, that's something most students understand. They stay connected to the puddle at all times. Uh, you do have to go away from the puddle and come back down quickly. You don't. You pause when you go back into the puddle, not when you go away from it. You go When you come back in, that's when you pause. You have to give it a quick freeze. That's what the rod is called, a quick freeze rod. So you have to go away, and then when you, once you come back in, you pause, okay? So let's get started, guys. So the first technique I'm doing, it is uh, circles. Okay, I'm going counterclockwise. So when you go up, you go up kind of like halfway from the bead that you already threw. You don't pause on the top side. You pause when you go, come back into the puddle. You gotta constantly watch that puddle. Okay, so now I'm starting with the backwards T. Okay, so I go up, down, side to side, and then up, and it repeats all the way up. I'm watching that puddle consistently, making sure that I'm adding metal. If you go kind of like too quick, all it does is digs into the plate or the pipe, whatever you're working with. All you're doing when you go away from the puddle is letting it freeze. Now your angle has a variable in this. You have to make sure that your angle stays consistent. If you angle your, your rod too far down or point it down, it starts getting more bulkier in the bottom side. You have to keep a consistent rod angle all the way through. Okay, now we're going with the J method. Okay. So all you're doing is pretty much making the shape of the J, or the letter J. Okay. Constantly keep an eye on your, on your rod angle or kind of get the feel of your rod angle. You can feel when you're changing it. Or you can visually see it from the rod and the puddle. When you see that the rod is angling like down towards one side, that means that your rod angle is going too far down. So you need to straighten it out a little bit. All 
All right, guys. So now that I threw uh, the bees down, now I'm going to explain to you what the, the, the way of doing it uh, more in depth. So whenever you're doing your hot pass, you have to make sure that you, ha you, ha you see the puddle forming. It's like, it's like a liquid uh, forming. If you see that it's digging in, like all you see, all you see is like the metal, like making a like a, like a crater. That means all you're doing is uh, digging into it. You're not adding metal. So if you're going too fast and all you see is a crater in there, that means you're not adding metal. All you're doing is digging into it because the rod can't dig into it. So you have to constantly be watching the puddle, making sure that you're adding metal all the way through, not just digging into it. Okay. So your rod angle, like I was saying, it does have a factor in it. If, if you have it too far down, like into the puddle, what that causes is for it to bulk up. And when, when that bulk up starts, for some reason the rod likes to attract itself towards the puddle and it doesn't, it doesn't form straight. It doesn't go along straight. And it kind of struggles to add more metal all around. So when that happens, when you feel like the rod is burning more towards the bottom side, what I do is I kind of go up, I kind of stay there for a quick second, and once I see, you gotta keep pushing though. That, that's another thing, you gotta keep pushing. If you don't see, if you see that the rod is angling, favoring more one side, that means that you have to stay on top a little bit, push in the rod a little bit more, and it'll set in the straight, uh, set, settle itself uh, straight. So you have to constantly be watching that puddle. Like I said, the puddle is everything when you weld anything. Okay. That's, that's the main key to welding, your puddle, understanding that puddle. So you have to make sure you see that little liquid form or that, 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 that puddle okay, all the way through. Okay. It can't, you can't just be seeing a little hole in there. You have to make sure that the metal is being deposited into your weld area. All right, guys, so there you have it, how to do a hot pass with 610. Um, now, I did, like, there's no bevel area. Uh, that's that's already clear but if i were to have a bevel i would do it like i would point it like wash up into the walls with the metal or uh, add metal and make sure it fuses onto the walls okay but this is just a simple way to show you how how to do a hot pass in case if you're struggling in class or you know on the job maybe um there are many way many more ways to do it there are different techniques this is some of just a just some of the techniques I use uh, in every day teaching these students how to do a hot pass, uh, whether it be on plate or pipe, uh, these techniques do work. Uh, your amps also depends on your machine. Me, most of the time, I run it at 85. Sometimes I have to even go lower, 75, maybe 95. Uh, it just varies on the machine, but most machines that I come across with, it does run at 85 smoothly, okay? Keep in mind, it is called a hot pass for a reason. You have to weld it hot. But there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helps you out in class or wherever you're at. Uh, don't forget to please follow us on uh, social media, uh, Instagram, WeldTube, or South Coast. And please subscribe to the channel and hope you enjoy, guys. Thank you.